Good evening, good morning, good day, wherever you are in the world, and thank you so much for joining another live stream uh, here with a home. <laughs> Get my uh, words mixed up already. A home in Italy, live from uh, from sunny Abruzzo. Absolutely great to see people join us again. Thank you so much for all your support. And uh, and every time you come to watch us on a Thursday evening, I really, really appreciate uh, the support that you give, the emails that you send, uh, and all the wonderful support as well we get on our YouTube channel, which if you've not been on there yet, please, please, please subscribe because we put lots of uh, uh, property videos on there. Uh, we're going to start doing town visits soon as well, and we're going to make sure that that YouTube channel becomes something really, really special over the next uh, over the next few months. So, yes, thank you very much for for joining us. Quick ones, a, a few uh, a few things to tell you just before when we before we get started on uh, on tonight's session. So next week, next week we were going to. So this is next Thursday. We were going to do um, our usual um, uh, subject where we do meet the home buyers, but unfortunately. Uh, the people that I wanted to do next week, uh, the timing is a little bit out for them. So I need to uh, rearrange that one. So next week, next Thursday, uh, so the 27th of April, we're going to be talking about buying remotely and uh, and how we do it, basically. So that's going to be a great session next Thursday because that has just become an unbelievable thing at the moment. We, we seem to be doing probably 70 or 80 percent. Um, of, uh, of help, the amount of help that we give to people is is, is all been remote buying. So whether that's people that uh, are buying properties that they've never seen, that happens an, an incredible amount recently, uh, or whether people have been out here, seen properties that they absolutely love, go back to wherever it is where they've gone uh, and send over power of attorney, and we buy, and we basically sign on on uh, on your behalf. So it's, some, it's become such a huge uh, thing recently that uh, that I do want to do another webinar about that. So that's going to be next Thursday, and then then, ladies and gentlemen, we're in May. Can you believe that we are in May after that? And that will be a completely different uh, set of uh, uh, webinars or streaming sessions. That I'm going to think about over the next week, and we'll have some great new content in May as well. So, Tony, let me know that. Oh, I was getting worried then that people weren't. I thought I was just talking to the camera and talking to myself, but Tony's starting to put a few people through. So, uh, I'm going to also flick to the chat section as well. So, yeah, let us know where you are in the world. I can see people coming in from YouTube, but there seems to be a little bit of a delay on Facebook uh, at the moment, but hopefully. Uh, Hopefully, they'll be joining us uh, very soon because I've got everything other than Facebook groups for some reason. So if you are watching on Facebook, give us a hello from wherever you are in the world, and then we can just make sure all of that. Oh, I've got one here. Gary. It's Gary and Denise here from Florida. That's the first people in from Facebook. So obviously, Facebook is uh, working as well. Excellent stuff. So this evening, ladies and gentlemen, it's the one that you've been waiting for. It's the one that we've mentioned over the last couple of months, and... As much as I hate to say this, and it doesn't often come out of my mouth, but ladies and gentlemen, tonight, tonight, for one night only, we need to get a little bit serious. And the reason why I'm saying that is we have Mr. Grim Reaper himself joining us. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, I was talking to him before and explained that we call him the Grim Reaper, and he's not a miserable person at all, or the bringer of doom and gloom, as I always say. Well, he is a little bit because he's talking about taxes, and uh, yeah, what can we uh, what can we say about that? It's not really good news, is it? When when people start talking taxes, but it's something. It's a reality that we do have to talk about. But thankfully, he is a really, really great person and a good friend of mine as well. So uh, even though we call him the Grim Reaper, he's not as miserable. So we're going to be bringing him on very shortly, and we're going to be talking, as I say, about taxes. And this is part one. So before I bring Gianluigi in, I did want to, we've been trying to structure this in such a way that we try and make it as simple as possible. But we all know that taxes are not simple. And I've written certain things down and Gianluigi said, Dave, that's going to take us two hours to talk about. And then he's written some things down. And between the two of us, we, we've thought that we're going to have to do at least two or three sessions on this one. Because... Obviously, it is a really complicated subject. So this evening, we are going to talk about the 7% taxes, how they work. We're also going to touch uh, a little bit on 
uh, wealth taxes and that kind of thing, how the whole, whole thing fits together with pensions and, and, and all under the umbrella of this 7%. And then what happens after the 7%, we're going to sort of touch on that kind of thing as well. The, the second part, we're going to be talking more about properties and basically how it works if you're buying a property here in Italy and maybe you're looking to rent it out, um, even if you're not becoming resident or anything like that. And we're also going to be talking about the new uh, digital nomad visas that sound, uh, that sound a bit of a strange name, but, uh, but there you go. And that's going to be for people that's thinking about moving out here and working here. And especially for any Europeans that we have uh, watching that can, that can move to Italy with no problem, there's some really interesting stuff on that. So that's all going to be part two. Uh, what I will say, and people are going to hate me for this, but I've got to say it because I have had a, a number of people that has asked me lots of questions uh, by email where they said, please, please, when Jan Luigi's on, can you please ask this? And then giving me a, a full list of their personal circumstances and everything else. Unfortunately, I'm going to say this now rather than Gianluigi sort of trying to get through all the questions. Unfortunately, we can't, we can't really do this. We're going to try and break it down as simple as we can. But to answer individual people's tax questions is going to be so difficult, especially when it's about your personal uh, things. And, and not only that, it's not great watching for everybody else if we're just talking about one's pers one person's tax affairs. So please go easy on us because... It, we are, it is a really complicated subject and we are really trying to make it as simple as possible. And the problem is there's that many rules for different countries. And then when it comes to the US, there's different rules for different states. So it is an overall look, a picture, uh, should I say, of, of, of potentially what you could be paying tax-wise. So be kind to us, uh, be fair with us and try not to ask too many personal questions. What I will say, what Gianluigi has uh, agreed to do, um, which again, it, I, I would absolutely hate his job, to be honest with you, because I, I know when I started this business up, I was probably his worst nightmare because I would ring him every five seconds uh, to ask what, how much tax I pay if I do this, what do I do if I do this, what do I do? And it, and it, it must be uh, horrendous to sort of have to deal with somebody like me asking that all the time. And I'm certainly not saying that you can't get in touch with Gianluigi, that, that's not what we're doing. But what, what he said to me is he is going to introduce something towards the end of the year because the way the tax schemes work here, or the way taxes work here, He's extremely busy now, and it, well, he's extremely busy all the time. I have to sometimes drag him up to a brood sort to come and have a, a few glasses of decent wine because he lives in Puglia where the wine's not as good. <laughs> he's going to hate me for saying that. I can see a little picture of him smiling at the bottom of my screen. Um, so uh, I've lost my train of thought now. Yeah, so what he's going to do towards the end of the year, he is going to offer a service where he can give people a forecast on their potential taxes um it is going to be a service that will be a payable service because a lot goes into this it will actually basically uh let's say if you're definitely going to be moving out here and you're thinking but i need to know what my situation is he will offer a service where he will almost put a tax return in for you but obviously not put the tax return in but do it as if he's done your tax return to say this is what you would be, be paying so that's one of the services that he's uh uh, is going to do but that is going to take a few months before that and we're going to see him a good few months a good few times before then and the other thing as well that we're going to uh, that we're going to be doing uh, together we're going to be doing some uh, live things together we've done it once before where we we book out a restaurant and people can come uh, in person and speak to him and and then obviously if you are moving out here and i know looking at some of the names of people that's on tonight i know some people are ready to buy properties um, or they're just waiting for the signing dates and you're definitely coming out. Um, people like yourselves that, are, that are either just bought the property or ready to buy in the next month or two months or three months, so you really need to get sorted out with somebody. Obviously, um, you can contact us at info at homeinitaly.com. If you put the subject, the bringer of doom and gloom or grim reaper, then I know who you're talking about. And I will obviously forward your emails to him personally. Um, for him to then contact you to dis discuss uh, any imminent uh, tax uh, that, that you should start paying and things like that. So that's not pushing everybody else away that's maybe not buying yet or maybe not or maybe buying sort of next year or something like this. It has to be this way, you know. And, but to be fair to, to him, he's going to come on and he's hopefully will do this once every six weeks or so 
and, and give us share as much knowledge as possible for you guys that are just thinking about it at the moment. But if you are in that situation, as I say, where you're signing very soon, or you've already bought and you're tuning in now thinking, I need to get my tax affairs done, then great. You can feel free to um, email me at info at a home in Italy dot com. Uh, you'll notice that Tony has fallen to sleep today. I said to him, don't put the tickers on too much today, but every now and then put the, I think it's called a ticker. There it is, look. So if you email info at home in Italy dot com, um, then if you can, uh, if you are ready to start your tax things, then obviously contact. And as I say, we're not pushing the rest of you out, but we do have to try and, uh, and, and, and give them a little bit of a break. Okay. So that being said, let's bring the bringer of doom and gloom, Gianluigi on himself. One second, let me just find his screen. And here we go. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, Dave. Good evening to everyone. Thank you for inviting me in this webinar. And thank you for well, attending. Gian Gianluigi, I must say, normally you're a very smiley. You're actually living up to your name of Mr. Doom and Groom, uh, Groom at minute. You need to... You know, you need to be a usual smiley self. We should have our, our glasses of wine ready. And uh, absolutely. Do I... <laughs> okay, so ladies and gentlemen, this is Gianluigi. We are going to, as I say, we're going to uh, uh, do our best to get through as much as, as, as possible. We have had a slight sound problem on Gianluigi's microphone, but hopefully we can, uh, we can, we can work, this, uh, work this through. So... Tell us a little bit about yourself, Gianluigi. How, first of all, how, because the one thing that I've always said that when I first met you, all those, I can't remember how many years it is ago now, but your English is extremely good, which is, for me is a huge thing for a tax accountant. How, how did that all come about? Well, to be honest, I was going to say that I would try to do my best with the, the language, and uh, I hope I'll, it will be sufficiently clear. But since I've appointed you as my English teacher, if I make some mistake, it's not my fault, it's Dave's fault. So. Yes. And coming from Yorkshire, as I do, there will be lots of mistakes. So, uh... <laughs> okay. so how did it? Was it your father that, was it that, that pushed you to, to learn English? Uh, sorry? Uh, they... what, was it your father that pushed you to learn the English language? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my father who decided to throw me in the UK when I was a teenager and, uh, and of course uh, I was happy to to go there. He thought it was because of the language but it, it was because there were many blonde girls there. <laughs> so that was a, a, a very nice experience and, uh, and also uh, it helped me to improve my English. Now, now, now talking seriously, going back to, to what we uh, about to discuss and yeah yeah I, so how long how long have you been an accountant for um i have uh, been registered in the board of the uh, charter tax accountant in 1994 so it's almost 30 years now yeah so giving your age away almost so. yeah. yeah uh and of course as you said you know we we'll briefly introduce myself i'm a I'm a, a tax accountant and I, my, my tax firm assists mostly foreign clients who decide to, to relocate to Italy or invest in real estate. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Great stuff. Great stuff. So you have clients, I mean, I know you've got a, a number of our clients uh, that are with you. you. You have clients all over the world, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, of course. Uh, coming from all over the world and investing in Italy in many regions. I have clients almost everywhere in Italy. Of course, most of them are where, I'm, uh, where, I, where I am, which is Puglia, but also, let's say, all the south of Italy. Uh, mostly Puglia, uh, but also, of course, everywhere in, in Italy. Yeah, because you have a number in Abruzzo, and as you say, you're also in, in yeah. North Italy. So, because it's quite a long subject, and we're going to try and make it as easy as possible for people, um, we said tonight we're going to talk about the 7% uh, tax rate. So before we do that, I know I asked you this question uh, before we came on live, and I said I've got a simple question for you, which when you started answering me proved that it's not really a simple question. But before we start talking about the 7% and how all of that works, let's say I'm from the UK, as you know, so I'm a UK uh, 
resident, let's say, and I'm moving to Italy, or let's say I'm also a US. I'm choosing UK and US, and I don't no disrespect to anybody else. I'm, I'm choosing that because looking at the people that's in, you know, the, the vast majority is coming from those areas. Let's say I have a state pension, okay? So I'm deciding to move to Italy. This is before we start talking about 7% and all that sort of stuff. I've just got a basic state pension. I've managed to save myself up whatever. You know, I've managed to save myself up 50K and my state pension is enough for me to live on in Italy. So I come over to Italy with my 50K. I put it in a bank in, in, in Italy. I've got my state pension at home. Do I need to worry about meeting somebody like you in the nicest possible way? No, 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 you don't have to be worried if you have been informed, um, say, in advance. Of course, generally speaking, it's, uh, I think it's useful for everyone to know that in Italy, we, um, the so-called worldwide taxation principle is uh, applicable, which means that if you move to Italy from a tax perspective, you, can, you will be a subject, you will be required to pay your taxes in Italy, first of all, because Italy would be the first country where you stay, where right? you technically uh, would be considered tax resident, which means being here for more than 183 days. Uh, of course, uh, according to other legislation in the country where you come from, you could be also subject to comply with the, that jurisdiction. And in this case, we have agreements signed between countries like Italy and uh, with all many many countries called treaties against double taxation which help find uh, a solution in order to avoid being taxed twice so to answer your question of course if you decide as a uh, UK uh, citizen British citizen to move to Italy with uh, with a pension of course you will be taxed in Italy, according to the the worldwide taxation principle, but it will depend on the type of pension that you are uh, receiving. So, if it's a state pension, so I'm just getting a let's say I'm just getting a state pension, a normal state paid by the government. Uh, come to Italy with, with with my money, as I say, put everything in the in the that don't leave anything else abroad or anything else. So I've got a state pension. Yeah. For those what? British citizens who come here and they only have as source of income a, a British pension, which is a, a state pension, according to the agreement signed between Italy and the, uh, and the UK, the state pension will only be taxed in the UK. So technically, okay. you don't have, you will not be subject to pay any tax in Italy. And the same will be for the US, which have the same um, regulation and other countries. Uh, of course, it depends on specific country because agreements signed are, can be different. They have the same scheme, the same structure. But of course, then if you're going to be in details, of course, they can have different uh, treatment. For what the okay. UK, the US, for example, are concerned, if you have a state pension, you will be taxed only in the in your native country but if you have dual citizenship so for example if you they are have also an italian uh, citizenship an italian passport in this case it will be the opposite so also the state pension will be uh, taxed uh, will be taxed in italy and not in the uk anymore so just be taxed in italy the so general rule for a UK citizen or US citizen moving here with a state pension, this pension will be taxed in the US or in the, okay. in the, in the UK. Now, I know you mentioned there's a, there's a few different accept, exceptions and things like that, which, we'll, which we will cover now. But because somebody's just thrown up a, a quick question, do you by any chance know if there's an agreement with Israel for that kind of thing? If there's, sorry, if, if, there, if there's a similar kind of thing with Israel, yeah, yeah, we have we have uh, uh, Italy has signed agreements with all many countries, most okay. of the country. Uh, of course, it's slightly more difficult for those called the so-called the, the black list. Uh, but this is another another topic. It's about uh, the let's say the 
the absence of uh, exchange of, of tax information between authorities, which makes things more complicated. But let's say most of the countries are, um, uh, let's say, have an agreement, so we can then go into detail of the specific agreements. Yeah, okay. So I know before you, you started again, uh, Tony, if you can just hold that question on just one second. We, we, when, when, we spoke, when we spoke before, we did mention Canada and somebody has asked uh, as well about Canada. So if we can just quickly touch, obviously we're not gonna do every single country because we'll be here all night uh, sort of doing country things. As you say, the vast majority um, have got uh, some sort of agreement with Italy. But you did mention how Canada is a little bit different to other places. So can we just cover Canada? Yeah, in private, Canada, private state pensions or you know private pensions. Yeah, yeah. In Canada, regardless of the type of pension that you receive, so state or private doesn't make uh, any uh, difference. The um, let's say the requirement is just to understand the amount of the pension that you receive. Um, more specifically. If the, the pension that you receive is uh, below 10,000 um, Canadian dollar, which uh, equal approximately 6,000 uh, euro, uh, you will be subject to uh, the pension will be taxed only in Italy. Otherwise, it will be taxed in uh, in both countries. So both countries will be entitled to tax the pension of, let's say, 12,000 uh, Canadian dollars. And of course, in this specific case, we will, uh, the treaty against double taxation will be applicable. Generally speaking, uh, uh, the, the treaties, they say that when the agreement says that both countries can tax the same uh, source of income, of course, the tax paid in one country, so in the country where you live or you are resident, Italy, can be deducted from the tax that you pay in the other country. So okay. this is generally how it works. Perfect, perfect. So some of the questions that people are asking, what I would ask everybody is to, to because hopefully by the end of the session we may have a little bit of time to go personal ones. This one I'm going to quickly uh, show because this is a, a, an interesting one that Joy sent. When we say government pensions, so Joy must have been part of the NHS, the National Health Service, which, which is obviously run by the government. Is that treated as a state pension? Is that taxed? In a, so if somebody that works for the government or somebody that works for somebody yeah. like the NHS? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What we consider also is a state pension, also, also a pension coming from the NHS. Ah, okay. And whatever, let's say, uh, body is can be considered, you know, public. Ah, okay. So like police, fire, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Right. I am apologising. I know a few people have asked questions on that, but I, as I said, we do want to try and sort of keep things moving along, and we will cover as many subjects as, as we can over the sessions that we do. So talking about the 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 the, the seven percent, then let's talk about the the, the seven percent um what everybody that contacts me they, they say we need to be in a town less than twenty thousand people we need to be in these areas can you first of all tell us where the seven percent is applicable if i want to come over and pay this seven percent flat tax i know you're going to explain what that means shortly where in italy do i need to be looking yeah first of all let me let me tell you uh dave and you know, i think this will be uh useful to give a uh, 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 background of this measure, of this law. The 7% has been introduced in Italy with the intention, of course, to attract people uh, uh, living here, spending their money here, and so somehow to boost our economy. And I have to say that uh, somehow Italy um, was looking with great interest of what the other countries like Portugal, for example, did in the past before Italy, um, introducing some uh, laws which which uh, made people eligible for a, a tax reduction or exemption in Portugal, for example, for ten years. So the idea was to try to find a way to attract people. So the seven percent, of course, it's for people who are retired, of course. Okay. So. Uh, 
So let's say that the requirement of the 7% is that you have to, you need to, re to be uh, pension, so you need to receive a full pension. Now to answer your question, the pension, uh, the 7% scheme is applicable in Italy in all the so-called mezzogiorno. The mezzogiorno of Italy is, uh, let's say, uh, regions uh, of the center south of Italy. So it includes, of course, uh, starting from the bottom, uh, Sicily, uh, Calabria, Basilicata, Puglia, uh, Campania, Molise, Abruzzo. And also part of the region of Marche and of Umbria. So let's say half of Italy, I would say, so the half of the south of part of Italy is eligible for the scheme. Okay, so these, because this was quite interesting that you were telling me, so I'm going to put on the screen now what you told me. So in La Marche as a region, you're saying that these particular uh, councils... Towns, yes. The town, so it's at the, yeah, so they're, they're, you can actually get the 7% in these three places. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and, so also, and also an area in the Umbria, which is not exactly, say it's in the middle north of Italy, exactly, the area of Noccia, which, by the way, as you know, is quite famous for a very tasty prosciutto. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, so yeah, that's interesting. So, just to show everybody again, these are the places in La Marche. If La Marche is, is on your, your list, these are the, uh, the three councils. And then the one, again, in uh, Umbria is Norcia. And all of these you, you can take on this this uh, this 7%. Yes, yeah, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, Dave, if I interrupt you. And also, I, I forget to mention that it's uh, eligible also the uh, Isle of Sardinia. So, also Sardinia, it's part of the 7% scheme. Is it really right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So not only right. Sicily, but also Sardinia. So the whole the whole of Sardinia. The whole of Sardinia. Very interesting. So I know Gary Schultz uh, has just mentioned the Marque again. So just to make make sure everybody sees this. Uh, so Camerino, uh, Matelica, and Tolentino. And then in Umbria, well, there is the Norcia, the town of Norcia. And then you're saying, obviously, the south of it is we said up to Abruzzo and the whole island of Sardinia. Okay, there you go. That's a new one. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. So this 7%, yeah. what? 7% on what? Let, let's have two scenarios here. I'm yeah. a multimillionaire uh, living wherever in the world. I managed to get my visa to come and live uh, in, 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 in Italy. I've got 50 houses all over the world. Uh, that I rent out and do whatever uh, with those things. I've got millions in the bank. Uh, I'm dreaming. Um, I moved to Italy, and I've got pensions and everything else. What what am I what am I paying seven percent on? Everything. I think I will immediately answer um, to your question. Probably it would be also good, maybe useful, to uh, point out the requirements to be eligible for this. Okay. So let's say you will be eligible uh, for the 7% scheme if, first of all, if you have a foreign pension. So you need to receive a foreign pension. So of course, if you did not reach your retirement age, or even if you reached, but you don't get any pension, of course, you would not be eligible for the scheme. The second requirement is that you have to relocate, to move to Italy and prove that you have, have not been resident in the previous, uh, previous five years. So in other words, only those who now relocate to Italy will be eligible for the scheme. So okay. this cannot be applied to someone who moved here in Italy two or three years ago. Okay. Okay. There has to be somebody in this tax year. Exactly. Uh, and then if you like, I will ex better explain how to count all for the five years. Yes. The third, the third requirement is about you know, where you live. You have to relocate, as we said, in a, in a, in a town with less than 20,000 uh, inhabitants. Uh, so all the south of Italy, but of course, in specific towns. So of course, you cannot move, I don't know, to give an example to... 
Pescara or to uh, Bari because of course the population is much higher. So you need to find a place which has less than 20,000. The 20,000 are an official um, figures provided by the government each year. Okay. And uh, so once you, once you uh, of course, uh, meet all these requirements, you will be eligible for, for, for the 7% the scheme. And now to answer your question, you, the 7% scheme is an amazing scheme because first of all, uh, you will be taxed on your pension only with a flat tax of 7%. And only in Italy. So it means that after informing the UK authorities that you relocate to Italy, they will not be entitled to tax your pension. So you will get your pension growth in Italy and you will be taxed in Italy with a flat tax rate of the 7%. Right. Uh, and this is, a, of course, a good thing, particularly if your pension is, uh, let's say, high. But the big advantage of the 7% is that being eligible for the 7% scheme, you will be also be eligible to tax all your foreign income with the 7%. So let me give you an example. If you relocate from the UK, you move here with your pension, but also you get you have other sorts of income. Maybe you have properties that have been uh, rented out. Maybe you have dividends because you own, you own companies. Uh, so whatever other income you get uh, generated outside of Italy, this will be taxed in Italy with only with the 7%. Right. And I, I'm I know you mentioned the UK then uh, as an example, but again, this goes with the vast majority of of countries i'm guessing uh, um where, where where there's these sort of treaties in place and things like that so so to get this right then the seven percent let's talk let's split this up again onto the pension side so i get a good pension say um in i'm, I'm going to say the us again i get a good pension in the us i'm i pay i tell the authorities there in the us i'm moving to italy i'm off to italy so you're saying that they cannot tax that pension anymore but I'm taxed in Italy at 7% for 10 years. Is that correct? Exactly. So, so sticking just to the pension for one minute. So let's say the 7%, uh, I then decide in 10 years time, I'm going back to the US. I've, I've decided I'm, I'm no longer going to be in, the, uh, in Italy. Do I have to pay anything back to Italy or can I just move back and, and then just start back on the US uh, tax? How does that work if I, if I go back? Okay, first of all, first of all, let me, let me uh, tell you that you, you mentioned the, uh, the example of the US and I need to here to uh, stress one specific uh, situation. Uh, generally speaking, in Europe and in many countries, the principle based on which we are taxed is the residency. Right. But only in the US, the principle is different because U.S. citizens are taxed because of their citizenship, not residency. So what happens if a U.S. citizen comes and relocates to Italy? That unfortunately, he will be subject to two different tax principles. Because for the U.S. will be the citizenship and for the EU will be the residency. So to answer your question, if I relocate as a US citizen here, I will be certainly be taxed here with the 7%, but we need to deal with the tax authority. And to be honest, I have uh, foreign in American clients, but since we applied for the, well, this scheme only in one year ago, I still don't have the certainty that the tax authority in the US will accept this. However, uh, even if they don't, they, they tax and solve the, um, the pension that is taxed in Italy with 7%, the, the taxpayer, so the, uh, the client that comes in, in Italy, will be eligible, will be um, entitled to claim back the taxes paid in the US. So in other words, even if the tax authority in the US will tax the pension, 
being an Italian resident will entitle the, the, the client to claim back the money. This is for the US. For the UK or other country, this will not happen because the 7% will entitle you to just not be taxed in the uh, UK or in many other countries. Okay. Sorry if I had to make this kind this. Um, no, 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 it's fine. Just, it's I mean, fine. this is, as, as we discussed before, unfortunately taxes are so complicated that yeah. you can't you can't just roll it out and say that's the same for everybody so just to get that clear then because i can i can hear in, in my, my brain in internet land people saying hang on a minute i've not quite got this so in the us we as i say you've got a pension in the us we're saying that potentially because we're a us citizen so if we were an italian citizen or, or whatever then obviously that would be different but if i'm a us citizen I moved to Italy on the 7% tax scheme. I'm accepted on that. I'm, I'm, everything's fine on that. Potentially, because I'm a US citizen, the US can still say, you're paying taxes here. So let's say I've paid, uh, I pay my taxes in the US because they're saying I'm still a US citizen. I live in Italy. I've paid my 7%. Are you saying that the 7% I pay in Italy will come off the US side? Or are you saying, that the money that I pay to the US uh, in terms of the tax that I pay in the US, I can claim that back in Italy. That no, bit I'm not The general rule of, you know, if we read the treaty against double taxation signed between Italy and the UK or Italy and the US, it states clearly that the pension, if state pension, will be taxed only in the US. So if yeah. it's a private pension, should be taxed only in in Italy, but since in the US there is also the, re, the the law that you will be taxed according to your citizenship, we should find out with the tax authority if being a US, US citizen moving to Italy and still keeping the US passport, passport according to the US law, it still still needs to be taxed at source. Uh, um, take on account and then claim back the money it's just a question of cash flow this is what i'm trying to explain okay? right. but if we look at the general rule the us will be treated as the uk and other countries like uh, for example uh, argentina we have venezuela many countries in the in the european union if the pension is a private pension you will be taxed only in italy so the tax authority in that country will not be entitled to tax you uh, at source. Okay, okay, perfect, right. So put into one side pensions for a second. Let's say um, we have um, properties in the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the US again. Let's say we have properties in the US when okay. i come to italy and i go on this seven percent scheme what, what what benefits is that to me okay this is a very good question and also this is a very big advantage of being eligible for the seven percent because if you are eligible for the seven percent you will also be exempted from uh submitting uh according to the anti-money laundering legislation a specific uh, form of your annual tax return uh, mentioning all your um, properties and financial uh, holdings in the US. So in other words, generally speaking, Italian residents who live here and have assets outside of Italy are subject to the so-called RW section. I will give you an example. If me, Gianluigi, Italian citizen, living in Italy, Italian resident, buy a property in, uh, I don't know, in London, I wish I could, let's say, in London, or I open a bank account somewhere else, I need to mention to the Italian authority that I have these assets outside of Italy for two different reasons. The anti-money laundering legislation, so it's just informing the authority about what I own outside of Italy, and also two taxes due in Italy on uh, assets uh, held outside of Italy. 
This is the general rule. But if I am an Italian resident and I am, I am eligible for the 7%, the RW section is not, I will not be subject to it. So the great advantage of those who can uh, be eligible for the 7% is that they will not be required to fill out the RW section, which means that they will not be paying any tax on their foreign assets. Okay. So I know opening up that thing of, 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 of let, let's just quickly jump into this for, for one second, because the way it works, if I remember right, you, you sent me uh, the details of this. So just so people understand what that means about the, these little taxes, wealth taxes, aren't they really? The, the, yeah, the, 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 the we can call it wealth taxes, yes. Yeah, so talking about some, so let's say in general now, somebody moves out here, let's put to one side the 7% and all the rest of it, the kind of things that somebody living here would have to pay on assets outside of Italy. So, for, so I'm not talking about an asset that's that's earning you money. It's maybe you've just got a house. Um, I understand that this one is called IVIE. That's a tax on properties held outside of Italy. Now, I know if you're on the 7% scheme, you've said that this doesn't apply. So to most people, it doesn't apply. But if they stay here after 10 years, it will apply. Just tell us briefly, if I own a property in wherever that is outside of Italy, I'm not going to say any countries, I own a property outside of Italy, I don't rent it, I just own the property, this IVIE tax, what exactly is that? Okay, yeah, the uh, IVI uh, in tax, it's, uh, in my opinion, first of all, it's a very unfair tax, I have to say. And in my opinion, it's really borderline. I don't know if it should be considered not legal because Italy decided to introduce a law which is um, tax, um, taxing uh, uh, property and asset which is not in the Italian uh, territory in our border. So in other words, Italy has decided that if you live in Italy, although you own a property in, in the UK, you will be paying a tax simply because you own a, you own a property in, in another country, which is, in my opinion, it's quite really weird. Uh, but that said, it's uh, president it's a law, so we have to comply with it. So if an uh, Italian resident, regardless of their nationality own properties outside of Italy, they have to pay the this tax, the IVI tax, which is worked out based on the cadastral value of the property. Now here also it's a bit complicated because not every country has the concept of a cadastral value of the property. When the cadastral value is existing, the, uh, the the tax will be uh, calculated based on this cadastral value, uh, which is provided by the government. So in, in the UK, it could be the, the land office, for example. Uh, in that country, there are specific uh, authorities who provide this uh, value. If we don't have this cadastral value, the uh, the value will be considered the the purchase price. So we have to find out how much I paid that property when I bought it, and I will be taxed with a 0.76%. So just to give an example, if I have a property which is worth it, well, which, which, whose cadastral value is 100,000, okay, or if the purchase price is 100,000, I will be paying 760 euros. Per, per year. Annually. Okay. And that's just, but again, just to reiterate to everybody, in, under the 7% scheme, this that we're talking about now and the next little tax are not payable while, while you're within the 7%. But after that 10-year period, I own a property in the UK, in the US, in Canada, wherever it is, it's worth 100,000 of whatever that is. I pay 0.76% every year on each one of my uh on each one of my properties if i've got 10 properties i pay that okay but under this under the seven percent scheme for the first 10 years i do not pay that the other one is evafe i think you call it so tax on financial assets held outside of italy 
just a quick example of a, a financial asset. Oh yeah, help. sure. But this is the, it's quite uh, also easy to say. Uh, so if you are an Italian resident, regarded your citizenship, and you uh, own financial investments outside of Italy, so namely uh, current bank accounts, saving bank accounts, uh, shares of companies. Um, unfortunately now starting from this year also cryptocurrency the tax authority wants to understand that what it is you know is now it's mandatory to mention the, the uh, crypto uh, assets although i have to say that it's almost very diff still very difficult to find out you know if i have if i own a, a, a crypto asset but let's say officially you should mention this so bank accounts, savings, uh, shares, uh, any any sort of financial investment, uh, you will be taxed with a uh, with a tiny tax with a point uh, two zero point two percent. So just to give an example, if I have savings in the bank for one million, I will be paying uh, uh, two thousand. If it's okay. one hundred thousand, will be two hundred. But the but the seven percent. Well, if you're under that scheme, you don't pay any of these. So just a, a, an interesting question that uh, Jackie has uh, just put on with regards to the IVIE tax. If you inherit a property outside Italy, so you live in Italy, God forbid your parents pass away, you inherit that property, do you still pay the IVIE tax even though you haven't yes. purchased it? Yes, of course, because it's not, it's not the question is not if you just... Uh, purchase the property if, if it's you own the property the own the property can uh, may come to you because you buy or because you inherit so definitely absolutely the same thing so you will be subject to the uh, EVA uh, tax okay perfect another uh, quick question um, that I'm gonna put up is uh, the, the, the Bob is, I think this one's a fairly easy one to answer. Will you pay IVIE tax if you are not a resident of Italy? I'm presuming you would no, not. Because of course you not. As, as I said, the EVA and the IVIE tax are only for Italian residents okay. uh, who, so of course, are tax residents in Italy, so they live here. So of okay. course, you know, for, not for non-residents. Perfect. And just a, a, another quick one, because I think this one's quite an interesting one. So uh, again, we're talking about Canada here, so we may be being a little bit specific, but the second part of this question I think is quite interesting. If you get a disability pension from the country wherever you live at the moment, um, would that be classed as a pension or would it be classed as a state pension? This is a very interesting question. You know, given the law, and particularly with it's about Canada, no, you said it's about Canada. Yes. I'm quite, um, I would say, uh, confident that the disability pension, as I can read here, will not be a subject because somehow the law uh, speaks about, in, in the Italian uh, text uh, at least, uh, about uh, um, a pension coming from, uh, I don't know, to be honest, the English word, when you get, for example, uh, uh, you are injured during your during uh, while working, and you get a pension because you you have been injured. Uh, this pension is not will not be uh, subject to any taxation. So I, of course, we should uh, investigate, but I'm quite uh, sure that the disability pension would not be subject to any taxation as well. Okay. Okay. So I know I'm. I'm doing what I said I wouldn't do and, and, and putting loads of individual questions on. So I apologize. We'll get back to get back to the normal normal part. So we say that it's ten years that 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 this uh, that this yeah. particular scheme goes on for. And as I say, some of the subjects, just to let everybody know, some of the subjects that we're briefly mentioning, we will come back to them on other sessions. But going back to the seven percent, um, after ten years, as I say, if if because I think we, I mentioned this before, I don't know if we've got the answer, but let's say I decide to move back to whichever country I've come from. Do I owe Italy any money because I've not decided to stay there for the rest of my life? No, 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 absolutely no. You will be free to 
to to leave, of course. But by law, the, the duration, let's say, of the scheme is ten percent. So starting from the eleventh year, you will go into the ordinary scheme. So if you keep being an Italian resident, you will simply switch from the seven percent to the ordinary scheme. Uh, but of course, you can also decide even before the ten, the ten years to leave. The law says that you have to, let's say, be committed for no less than two years. Right. So, let's say, starting from the third year, in theory, you can change your mind and go back to your country. You, uh, the Italian authority will not, uh, will not claim any additional tax. But of course, if you just uh, submit your first tax return with the seven percent, and then you move back to your country, then the Italian authority. Uh, would be entitled to claim the ordinary taxation and not okay. the seven percent scheme. Okay, so I don't know how easy a question this is to answer. The ordinary tax scheme, just to give us an idea, can is is there a, a set percentage? Can you just tell us what that means? In Italy, the the income tax is a structure that's followed. It's in different brackets depending on the amount of the income that you have so if your personal income is uh, let's say from zero to uh, eighteen thousand, you go you fall into the first band into the first bracket of, uh, of income which is taxed with a 23 percent tax rate then right. for, for example the second the second band is from 18 to thirty thousand. it's 27 and so on up to the final one which is a 43 percent in Italy so what would happen is that if your pension for example is a uh, 12,000 and uh, annual pension is 12,000 you will fall into the first bracket and you will be paying a 23 percent instead of seven percent okay so zero to 18 23 percent 18 to 30 is 27 percent can exactly. i can i get what what's the next what's the next brackets yeah and uh, this now to be very honest with you, you if you give me one second i will find out i i, I can remember because they have changed now the 2023 uh i will just now try to recollect all the um and thank you for this and thank you for this easy question <laughs> <laughs> that was a sly question uh, yeah exactly <laughs> Because uh, now we, uh, we they have introduced the law with a low budget now that we have now in 2023 for, um, for tax rate, which is 23, 27, uh, 35 and 41 in 2023. So um, just uh, allow me to just be more specific uh, later because I should now find out uh, what the bands are. However, the the final ban is over uh, fifty thousand. You go into the final, into the final um, bracket of the highest taxation in Italy, which okay. is forty-three percent. I know you're going to really thank me for that question later, aren't you? So uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's very easy to find. It's very easy. What you you are you? If you give me just one uh, your one thirty seconds, I can tell you. But of course, I need to to check it. Right, yeah, yeah. We, we will let you off, seeing as though the, it, is, it is part of a new budget. So we'll we'll, we'll let you have one uh, uh, one little error. Um, is tax from Euro number one? Because obviously in the UK, I don't know about the rest of the world, but we have a set amount that we can earn before we're taxed. Um, is that no? Does that happen in Italy? No, unfortunately, no. We don't have any kind of you know. Let's call it no tax area in Italy. All the uh, all the uh, amount of tax. However, depending on the type of income, source of income, we have some allowances. So, for example, if you mention, I don't know, if you have uh, income coming from your work, so you are, for example, employed. Of course, there are some allowances, fixed allowances, which will somehow generate a um, uh, area of. Uh, initial income which will not be subject to any tax although by law we don't have a no tax area so all the income will be taxed but then depending on the type of income employment self-employment uh, and so on we have some specific fixed amount which 
will make the first uh, amount uh, exempted from uh, taxation. But yeah. there is not a general rule like in the UK. But, but in general, so there's somebody coming on a pension, they're not going to really yeah. have any of those allowances. Just to give you an, an idea, you know, on, a pen, on a pension and on employment, for example, uh, usually the first 6,000 are not taxed, given the allowance provided by the government. The, the first 6,000 will not be subject to any tax. Right, right, okay. So what okay. you have to pay will be, uh, will be somehow covered by the allowance provided for that specific uh, income. Okay, perfect. Okay, so... Um, Somebody's just asking a, a question here. So if you purchase in Abruzzo, for instance, so uh, we know that's part of the scheme, that the city has more than 20,000 residents, so this applies to any, uh, even in Puglia or anything like that. So Abruzzo, you can get the 7%, but if the city has more than 20 uh, residents, do you qualify or don't you qualify for 7%? No, you don't qualify because we mentioned about the requirements, one of the four requirements. Uh, is that you have to uh, relocate in a town with less than 25. Okay, okay. So regardless of the fact that, that Abruzzo offers this and Puglia offers this and things like that, if it's over 20,000, unfortunately, um, yeah. you can't do that. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Okay, Gianluigi, well, we've just about come to, to our hour. I mean, I know it is a... It is, there is so much to talk about on, on, on tax, isn't there? Definitely. It's, it's, a, it's a very... It's a, you know, I've been watching other people do these sorts of talks as well, just to see how they structure them. And it's so easy to be pushed off into another subject because it's so complicated, isn't it? At the end of the day, with taxes, not just here in Italy, but but the rest of the, the rest of the world as well. But I do thank you so much for for, for giving up the time. I know how busy you are, um, and and hopefully then, as we said, maybe in another month's time. We can do another one of these and cover some of the subjects that we've done, so, especially on the wealth tax side, some of those unfair taxes, as, as, as you call them, because these really do affect people's lives. But in general, the 7% scheme that people that, that people want, it is a great scheme, isn't it? You know, it, it is a, a great yeah. tax saving scheme as well. Uh, and as far as your um, as far as you're concerned personally, if I mean, I know the answer to this because you, you deal with a lot of a lot of our clients. But people coming from the U.S., Canada, places like that, do you have the systems in place to be able to help them on the Italian side? Maybe they've got an accountant in the U.S. or, or in Canada or, or wherever they are in the world. You can work with that, those people to, to get the right schemes. Yes, absolutely. Of course, I can assist for what the Italian side is. Uh, uh, and perspective is concerned and of course I usually am in, uh, in touch uh, with uh, tax account with my colleagues in the in the country where the, where the client is uh, in but I do not uh, provide uh, services which are provided in that country I will make an example uh, this week I had a, a, a potential friend asking me if I was providing also the service of filling out and submitted the, the 1040 the tax return, US tax return in the, in, in the US. No, I don't do that. I do the Italian side of your tax return. And of course, I can be in touch with the, my colleague in the US, but of course, I do not uh, uh, provide the service of, of submitting, I don't know, the 1040 in the US or the tax return in the UK. Yes. Yeah. But, of course, I, but of course, I can, I, I can of course, be in touch and uh, with my colleague, and of course, uh, and just 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 to let people know, because I, I think I mean it, it's something it's quite an Italian thing. This, but when you say your colleague, what you mean is somebody in the same uh, yeah, in the yeah. same business as you. Not necessarily yeah, yeah. that you use one person in the year. No, I think it's a great thing. So I think in Italy, just to explain to people, if you're a, a geometer or you're a, an accountant or whatever, anybody else that has the same profession, you call them your colleagues, don't you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So just to make it clear to everybody, it's not that Gianluigi has a, a colleague in every single country. He will work with your tax advisor in your country uh, and, and, and to make sure that you're getting all the, the, the right information and doing everything correct. Okay, Gianluigi, really appreciate it. Can't wait to see you again and, uh, and, and we'll share some uh, Montepulciano very soon. 
Um, hopefully, you're going to do another one of these in about a month's time or so. Um, with great I'm pleasure. With great pleasure. Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, brilliant. Let me let me also they thank you those who are thanking me for being informative because for me it's really a pleasure to provide the initial picture and uh, help people not to make mistakes or at least to take decision based on the uh, see the right information. Brilliant. Brilliant, which is what these uh, Thursday nights are all about. Dan Luigi, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you, uh, I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody. Well, there you go. So, uh, he's not that bad, is he? He's not Mr. Grim Reaper. I'm, I'm on a joke. He's actually a, a great person. He's a really good good friend of ours. And and, uh, and, and on this very, very difficult subject, we, we do try and, and, uh, and, and, and make it easier. I think I sort of slightly went off uh, <laughs> off into, a, into another area, which I said I wouldn't do. But yeah, we will try and keep it as simple as possible. He's going to come back again next month and we'll try and cover some of those some of those wealth taxes, especially when people own properties abroad and things like that. And even that people that buy a property here um, and, and maybe rent it out, you know, because there's also tax implications on that as well. So it's going to cover that kind of thing. But there are, as I say, so many, uh, so many uh, scenarios, uh, but we will try and do the best we can. I promise you that. Okay, guys, thank you so, so much for joining me again. I really, really appreciate the support. As I said before, um it's, it's great all the emails everybody sends and, and all the comments people put um kevin's just saying do you have any dates for the tour in september october it's definitely going to be october uh not got the dates yet but i promise by by the end of yeah within the next two weeks we'll definitely have dates for october because uh, uh they're, they're going to be really good as well okay so thank you so so much as i say i really appreciate uh, uh you you guys turning up and listening to me uh talk every thursday it's it's really really appreciated and i will carry on doing this as long as i possibly can and as long as people will will keep joining in and and uh, and have me as part of the the uh, your your evening's entertainment i'm more than more than happy to do it so thank you so much everybody we'll see you again next uh, next thursday at the same time where we talk about buying a property remotely and how you can come over here choose a property go back to a wherever you're from and leave it with us to sort out or maybe you've seen something you just want to take a punt at online and think that's the one i want uh, i will tell you how we do things how we've managed to create the systems that we have uh, to help you do something like that okay guys thank you very much we'll see you next thursday